y'all. Today's video is going to be a little monthly update for the month of May 2021, as well as a video talking all about what our summer homeschool plans are. Let's get into it. First of all, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kayla. I am a second generation homeschool mom to two girls age seven and four in Texas. And this is Ode to Abode, a place where I love to talk about home education, homemaking, and parenthood. If you enjoy those things too, I really hope that you'll consider joining the fun by clicking that subscribe button, click that notification bell, and set your notifications to all so you'll be one of the first to know when I make a new video. I'm collabing with a bunch of fantastic homeschool mamas here on YouTube, and we're all sharing what our summer homeschool plans are. It gives you guys the chance to see lots of different ideas and ways to pursue learning during the summer months, whether that means that you're taking a full break and you're only doing natural learning, fun learning, game schooling, or you're sticking to your curriculum because you're a year-round homeschooler, or you're like me and you are a year-round homeschooler, but you do a different style of learning or a little bit more laid back homeschooling in the summer months. So hopefully checking out the playlist below and all of the mamas contributing will give you lots of ideas and inspiration. Okay, so first a really quick update for the month of May 2021, which we just finished. Today is June 1st. So for the month of May, my focus has really been staying on schedule, staying on track so that we can wrap a lot of curriculum up and head into summer with a lot of things done, a lot of things wrapped up so that we can get started on some of these fun things that I have for the summer that I'm gonna show you. I'm happy to say that during the month of May, we were able to finish All About Spelling Level One with my first grader. She's really been focusing on practicing her reading skills. She had already wrapped up All About Reading Level One, and now she's wrapped up All About Spelling Level One. With math, my goal is for my seven-year-old to be able to finish all of her first grade math curriculum by the end of June, and we are on track to do that. A lot of it at this point, since we are at the tail end of her curriculum, a lot of it is review, and we are on track to finish that by the end of June, which is fantastic. As for our history, social studies, science, we have paused all of that. We're heading into a transitional time during our summer, And so all of those formal studies are paused as of right now. Um, we might still do a little bit of history here and there if we have time or if there's interest, but right now we're not really putting a huge priority on any of those things. We're mainly focusing on wrapping up math and practicing our language art skills. So now let's talk about what we have coming up for the summer. So we are year-round homeschoolers. We recently started a Sabbath schooling schedule. If that's something you haven't heard of before, I did make a whole video on it. And I will go ahead and link um, some related videos in the description box that might interest you, such as our year-round homeschooling schedule and last month's monthly update so that you can kind of get an idea of where we're at, how we do things. We're doing this Sabbath schooling schedule, which basically means that we school for six weeks and then take a break. And so we are wrapping up another six week term right now, and we are on track and on schedule to take the entire month of July off. So we will have a four week break during July. We're gonna be easing out of our school year into that break, and then after that break, in July, we'll start back up in August, but we'll be easing in. So there's kind of this cushion of transition time on either end of that break. And that way we can really get used to the new routine, get used to the flow, 
um, as we ease into a break and as we ease out of a break and back into school. So what is that going to look like? Well, for the month of June, we will still be doing math every day because that's what we need to do in order to wrap up all of our math by the end of the month. We also are going to be doing a special language arts thing that is really fun and we haven't done before, which is going to be a dart from Brave Rider, and this one is going along with The Mouse and the Motorcycle by Beverly Cleary. So we will be reading this book during the month of June. This DART program is a four-week program, so it is perfect to finish in a month. So we'll be discussing the book, we'll be doing copy work and dictation and narration from the book. So I'm really excited for that. I haven't used any um, Brave Writer products yet. I love Julie Bogart. I love her books and her philosophy, but I haven't used any of her products yet. And if we like them, then maybe I will pick up some more and we will sprinkle them throughout the school year. But I feel like they're really good for having a language arts component that's a little bit more laid back, but they're still able to practice those language arts skills and kind of review things that we've learned with our more structured formal curriculum that we've been using the past few months. So that is what we're going to be doing for language arts for the month of June. Mainly we're going to be doing math and our dart with that book and that's probably it. I might throw in some spelling practice here or there. Um, I probably will still be doing some reading lessons and math lessons with my youngest who's four. And she already, you know, has a more laid back schedule because she's four. So I probably will continue that kind of preschool stuff with her. She's going to be transitioning into kindergarten in the fall. That is basically all we have going on for June. We're going to read a lot of books and we are going to spend a lot of time outside. So I'm really excited about all of that. Um, we've been working on fixing up our backyard. We have a fire pit, we have a trampoline, we are getting ready to get the kids a little kiddie pool for the summer. So we're going to be spending a lot of time outside. We're going to be doing nature walks, we're going to be going to the park, we're going to be going swimming, um, all of that good stuff. Now for the month of July, we will be finished with this dart. So we are going to actually transition into a different unit study for the month of July. The unit study that I have going for July is going to be a nutrition and health unit study. I don't have it to show you yet. Um, I actually sent the PDF file to my favorite family printing press and I am waiting for that to get back to me. But I will show it to you as soon as I get it and of course I'll update you on how it goes. It is a unit study from a website called Hands-On Homeschooling. I will link that down below in case you want to check it out. There is kind of an online video course component. So we will watch videos together. We will read books together. And then there is a workbook component that we can do together. I also want to make sure to include lots of time cooking and actually practicing these new skills of like reading labels when we go grocery shopping and planning a meal and preparing meals together. So that's what we're going to be working on for the month of July. For math in the month of July, there's going to be a lot of hands-on math because we're going to be cooking and working on our nutrition and our recipes and measurements and all of that stuff. So hands-on math. And then the other cool thing I have planned for math in July is in Singapore Dimensions Math, which is our beloved math program that we use, there are lots of hands-on activities and games and storybooks that are recommended. And I'll be honest, a lot of times, especially with my oldest daughter, if I feel like she really understands the math concept, I don't really do all of the things with that math program. We have a lot of weeks where we will just do our manipulatives, our hands-on lesson, and we'll do our workbook pages, and then that's it because she's got it and she's ready to move on. So what I want to do during July is I want to look back and see if I can pick out some games and activities that are going to reinforce and help us review 
all that she's learned in all of the first grade math. And then we will be doing all the games and activities in July. So our math in July is going to be play-based math. Lots of games, activities, hands-on math. And we will be reviewing all of the concepts that she's learned. We'll be practicing all of that but in a super fun and laid back, no pressure way. And I'm hoping that that will just keep everything sharp so that when we start back up with our second grade level math in August, we'll be totally ready for it. Okay, I have one more thing to share with you for our summer plans, and that is this binder. I went ahead and deconstructed a couple of workbooks for my oldest daughter and put them in this binder for her. So this is gonna be like her summer busy binder. Now there's a lot in here. I have a logic workbook. I have some cursive handwriting from a workbook that I got. Word search book, because she loves word searches. I also put her piano practice sheets in the back of the binder. So this is just gonna be a binder that she can grab and have some busy work, some independent work that's gonna keep practicing those skills. I don't expect that she will finish all of this by the end of summer. I don't think she'll even get half of it done. This will be something she continues to work on for the whole next school year, but I wanna make sure that she has something to keep her brain working during the summer while she has more free time. We haven't done any formal logic curriculum. So this will be our first time trying those. And she's already super excited because she loves puzzles and like things that she has to solve and figure out. So this looks like it's going to be right up her alley. So that's what we have going on for the summer. I want to make sure that our schedule is light enough so that we can enjoy plenty of time doing the summer fun things outside, but also still have enough learning so that we can keep our routine and not have that summer slide and have a nice transition into August when we start second grade and kindergarten. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that. And don't forget to check out the playlist and all the other moms contributing in the description box to see more ideas of what homeschool can look like during the summer. I'd also love to hear from you in the comments. What are your plans for your homeschool this summer? Are you a year-round homeschooler? Are you going to take the whole summer off? Let me know. I'd love to hear your ideas and get inspired from you. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Happy homeschooling.